All right, well, what we're looking at uh, right now uh, is, is an image of, uh, you know, which, which, which may or may not be, I suppose, an image of uh, Ulara Equiano, uh, who's the, the author of um, one of the earliest accounts of, uh, of life as an uh, African-American slave. And, uh, and his, his famous, you know, the interesting narrative of the life of Ulara Equiano is one of the first, uh, you know, publications of uh, slave narratives um, in, the, in the United States. And, um, and, and the reason that we're, we're looking at this image and the reason that we're looking at the, the Wikipedia page of uh, that... Uh, that represents, you know, uh, uh, a biography of or an account of Olara Equiano is uh, is because I have been uh, addressing this this question of of narrativity and non narrativity and um, and in a certain respect uh, of uh, representation versus abstraction as the result of uh, political positionalities of uh, subjects whose uh, right to express uh, the accounts of their, their lives and, and their work are, are, are uh, entailed or, or denied or, or entirely um, destroyed, you know, for one reason or another. And, and one reason might be because uh, the individual's story is, is considered uh, a threat uh, to uh, powers and structures of authority, you know, such as uh, is the case uh, with workers in the the Underground Railroad, uh, and and with uh, individuals, you know, involved in any any struggle against uh, oppressive regimes, or or because you know an individual's life um, is is considered unworthy of, of of listening to, and and those of course those two. Um, those two formal uh, rationales for uh, silencing are are interconnected, right? And so, in in one instance, uh, one is you know simply you know not heard or or denied you know the possibility of. Uh, literacy and uh, and the possibility of publication because one is outside of the circle of those who are allowed to receive uh, education and literacy and uh, to receive um, publication and then uh, there's the you know that group of individuals struggling that you know who who need to publicize a message but realize that their very lives are in jeopardy, you know, through the the publication of their 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 work, and um, and and so you know we've been ad addressing you know these these assumptions of uh, of, of of narrativity and um, these assumptions of of, of uh, choosing you know either to work you know abstractly or secretly or 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 to, to work representationally and uh, in, in the public sphere, and, and how those assumptions, uh, you know, um, are, are distortions of, of, of the fact that, um, you know, some of us have lived lives that are less than, uh, less than free, let's say. And, and so, and so choices uh, about working and writing and and constructing um, a narrative and truth, you know, um, are subject to those to those forces of, of being <laughs> less than free, right? And so I um, I've been working with that idea, and then uh, I, I thought about you know the interesting narrative of the life of um, Ulara Equiano and and you know some of the um, the issues that are raised around the the validity or truthfulness or construction of his own you know personal narrative and the way that that gets played out um, by scholars and the way that um, in a way that the way that it gets played out by scholars and investigators um, totally overlook right like the 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 monumental trauma of 
beginning one's own account uh, with shards. Uh, as an analogy, you know, Im imagine a situation in which a child, um, this is an analogy to, to, you know, how someone, you know, torn from a homeland and language and a history and, a, and, and stories of one's own life would have to begin telling that life, right? So imagine as an analogy to that, that a child is like um, pre-linguistic but experiences trauma, like violent trauma, whether that trauma is the result of, uh, you know, uh, war or whether that trauma is the result of uh, family life, but it's, it's a brutal trauma that's Imagine that it's it's a brutal trauma that's inflicted upon the child before the child has language to speak and, and to protest and and to narrate and to understand and and to process the event through language. And, and what the child The resources that the child has essentially been left with to, to process the memory of the event and, and to express and articulate the event uh, belongs to the child's body, to muscle memory. And... Uh, And, and to a whole domain of uh, involuntary physical responses to that memory, uh, tears and, uh, you know, perhaps, you know, screams and, uh, and pre-verbal, uh, you know, in some ways, you know, paralinguistic or, or pre-linguistic. Uh, vocalizations and um, and and uh, and uh, a kind of a, a hallucinatory memory that may exist in in the body um, and uh, and and not only in uh, the feelings of the body but in um, you know uh, immobilizations that may belong as part of the, the memory to, to the continuing uh, 
habitation of, of the body, right? So that, that, um, that there's, even once language has been learned, uh, m the memory uh, isn't a part of that language and, and doesn't belong to it in the same way that um, a memory that was processed after language, you know, an event that occurred after language belongs to, to language. And so the idea of being a witness this child's the idea of this child you know being a witness to to the violence inflicted upon the child um if if we conceive of it uh from from you know a reasonable point of view of understanding you could understand that uh you can't merely talk about it um retroactively and remember it in the same way that you would remember something which occurred after uh, attaining the ability to speak and, and narrate and uh, process uh, within language. So, you know, this analogy, you know, very much applies to uh, a life that, um, you know, was uh, robbed of of uh, home, robbed of, uh, robbed of, uh, you know, parenting, uh, in 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 a way that you know um, is so important to the development of self understanding and uh, the telling of narrative, robbed of history, robbed of of of, of oral storytelling, robbed of uh, you know the the possibility of writing. Uh, one on one's own, and then all of this, you know, have to be reclaimed, and uh, and reappropriated, right? And then, and 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 the methods of reappropriation are are various. They're diffuse. Listening to other people's stories, like getting idea, where do we come from? Uh, oh, that was a story that I heard from this one. Here's another story, and p piecing all of this together from shards, right? Essentially, because this this is like a the, the the story that you know one imagines maybe unfolds as sort of a holistic you know whole that's that's obvious and self apparent in this universal subject position just never existed it was always shattered and broken and 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 it was always you know reconstructed from fragments right all right so I'm gonna read um, and and I may you know focus on on something else as I, I read the passage focus on something else visually as I read the passage, but I'm going to read the description of, uh, of, uh, not of, of Equiano's narrative, but of, of what re is referred to in the Wikipedia site. And again, you know, Wikipedia is <laughs> the most scholarly place, but it's just a place to begin, right? A place to begin and understand what some of these issues are. I'm going to read the section that's referred to as controversy related to memoir, and and I want to try to draw out you know some of the ways you know in which um, the controversy itself, as it's framed, um, perpetuates a misunderstanding of what I was discussing and describing as you know this this fragmentation of and um and 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 doesn't get the analogy right that i made uh you know prior prior to the discussion and and it assumes like that there's just this natural state of 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 privileged self uh understanding that that we have uh that that should belong to the truth of of one's story so um i may or may not do an a you know an analysis of it uh but um but i i, I want to just you know place it out there as as um as as the kind of position that i'm trying to deconstruct right this the position of like this is this is either his story or it's not his story this is either a fiction or his narrative and 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 again 
from this point of view of remembering like, look, some of us never had the benefit or the option of beginning with uh, an unfragmented narrative or an unfragmented self-understanding. Um, and so holding us accountable to um, the, <laughs> the judgments of, um, uh, of, of this universal position that assumes that um, this, is, this is the way that you tell a story. And, and if you don't tell it this way, it's not a story or, or, or your story is irrelevant because whatever, it doesn't conform to this or that, or because we don't want to hear your story <laughs> or whatever it is. Um, that the, 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 that those positions are are themselves you know political positions right and and so reclaiming our stories in these forms and 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 it is is a political project and also like you know for me um, uh, defending Equiano is a political project and and defending the ways in which like history like dismissed Equiano perhaps is a political project and 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 defending um the, the defending the narrative isn't defending the narrative from this point of of, of kind of like naivete like uh, well you know all this happened to him so he can write whatever he wants it's like no all of this happened to him so this was the only way can't you see that this was the only this was the only way that the story could be told. Can't you see that? And that that, you know, in and of itself is 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 political. And to not see it is political, right? To not see that this was the only way for the story to be told is to ignore um, the brutality of uh, of the suffering. You know that uh, individuals, not only you know. Equiano, but of other individuals that uh, experienced uh, this captivity, uh, uh, experienced and 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 um, you know went through. And uh, the miracle isn't that um, the miracle is that the story got told at all, right? Um, not not that uh, you know not whether you know and and the some of the issues in 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 you know the criticism are, are are trivial in comparison to that i think okay so and you know and also like um um individuals you know familiar with you know african american slave narratives you know from you know the life of Frederick Douglass and and and, and others will realize that the, the, the acquisition of literature, of, sorry, of, of, of uh, the acquisition of uh, uh, literacy in, in these narratives is, is a thread um, that, uh, that is, is, is ubiquitous you know, th throughout. And uh, the acquirement of, of language, as is described in, in, in the narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass, is very much like like uh you know prometheus you know stealing fire from from the gods you know the 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 silenced and the illiteracy you know um had to be reclaimed and i think you know in in, in understanding that it, it's also important to understand you know so had you know the um the, the architectonics of, of, of what uh, biography and autobiography is had to be, you know, reclaimed from the ashes and, and, the, and the, uh, the fragments, you know, that weren't uh, available as, you know, simple truth, you know, uh, and simple memory, the way that a child who was traumatized after the acquisition of language could perhaps tell a better tale of, of the violence that was inflicted upon him. So understanding that from a psychological point of view, from a sociological point of view, um, you know, I hardly think is naive. So this defense of Equiano isn't um, from, from that, just, just, just to point that out, that isn't from that um, 
point of view of, of mere, you know, I, you know, subject identification or psychological identification with, you know, um, whatever, uh, a psychologically um, traumatized um, individual, it is based upon an understanding of the way that um, that works, rather, right? Um, in any case, I'll read the I'll read the description, and then um, I, I think that you know I've said enough already that my objections should be self evident. But if if not, we'll go over them, and I'll try as I'm reading it, you know, to. Uh, to focus, you know, elsewhere, and uh, to the best of my ability to uh, perform the reading and uh, and to uh, focus on an image of um, of Equiano that is interesting to me because again, it's a disputed portrait. Now it's thought to be someone else. Um, so again, um, pieces right, of images and lives and stories and narratives that had to be reconstructed because why? Because they were never preserved. Because he, he, he perhaps, you know, began without the right to be painted, without the right to be represented with, and, and, um, and, and the same reasons that it's a, a disputed portrait are the same reasons that elements of, of the life are disputed. So, this is the section called Controversy Related to Memoir. Following publication in 1970, I'm sorry, 1967, of a newly edited version of his memoir by Paul Edwards, interest in Equiano revived. Scholars from Nigeria have also begun studying him. He was valued as a pioneer in asserting, quote, the dignity of African life in the white society of his time, end of quote. In researching his life, some scholars since the late 20th century have disputed Equiano's account of his origins. In 1999, Vincent Coretta, a professor of English, editing a new version of Equiano's memoir, found two records that led him to question the former slave's account of being born in Africa. He first published his findings in the journal Slavery and Abolition. At a 2003 conference in England, Coretta defended himself against Nigerian academics like Obiwu, who accused him of, you know, in quotation marks, pseudo detective work and indulging, in, and then in quotations again, in vast public publicity gamesmanship, end of quotation. In his 2005 biography, Coretta suggested that Equiano may have been born in South Carolina rather than Africa as he was twice recorded, as he was twice recorded from there, or he, or actually that's unclear in this text. Coretta suggested that Equiato may have been born in South Carolina rather than Africa, as he was twice recorded from there, right? So I, I'm not sure exactly, it's a little ambiguous wh where the suggestion lies and where the, the fact of the recording lies. Coretta wrote, Equiano was certainly African by descent. The circumstantial evidence that Equiano was also African American by birth and African British by choice is compelling but not absolutely conclusive. Although the circumstantial evidence is not equivalent to proof, anyone dealing with Equiano's, Equiano's life and art must consider it. And that was again from Coretta. Um, According to Coretta Equiano, Equiano Vasa, that's you know another another of his names, um, baptismal record and an and a naval muster roll documented him as from South Carolina. So again, um, there are many. I'm breaking out of the of the Wikipedia. There are many many reasons why a naval muster roll would have documented him from South Carolina rather than. I mean, how would a naval naval muster roll have have documented it, it's not even a possibility it certainly wasn't a slot on the naval muster roll in 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 england for african birth right so so uh the 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 very idea of of taking you know taking this this fact that it's documented in 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 this 
mustard roll as evidence that, that Equiano might have been born in South Carolina is misreading the nature of, of the document. You know, it, it begins with a misreading of an understanding of the document itself. And it, it, it also begins with a misreading of, 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 of what it is like to piece one's life back together, you know, from, and story one's from fragments. Uh, that, and the fragments are there because of the violence inflicted upon the, the subject of the story, the narrative, right? Not, not, not anything due to the, the narrator's inability to construct a, a story. And, 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 that's, and that's how we should be beginning, but, but I'll go on. I'll, I'll go on. All right, so, so what I'm saying is that the, the muster roll of, that Coretta is referring to, you know, can't, can't really be um, considered evidence of, of any kind whatsoever, whatsoever of whether um, Equiano was born in the kingdom of, of, of Benin, you know, now now Nigeria, and, uh, or 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 South Carolina, because um, the muster roll itself would not have been able to uh, conceive of of recording um, the record of of Equiano's birth in in Africa. It it wouldn't have occurred. Uh, to anyone constructing such a document to even um, to even question uh, or or to uh, make that account. All right, so back back to the text. According to Coretta Equiano Vasa's um, baptismal record and a, a naval muster roll document him from South Carolina, Coretta interpreted these anomalies. Again, you know. I'm arguing that Coretta's interpretation is, is is largely ignoring the structures, you know, that are inherent in, in, in the forms of record keeping themselves. Interpreted these anomalies as possible evidence that Equiano had made up the account of his African origins and adopted material from others. Okay, now here's here's a I'm gonna stop again, but I'm gonna stop here for different reason. Not because I think you know, not because I'm criticizing Coretta's, Coretta's interpretation. In this instance, as I as I did in the other instance, and his failure to understand and interpret and interpret these anomalies in a in a in a manner right that that is consistent with with their uh, historical understanding, meaning. Um, in a manner that doesn't assume a kind of universal truth in in the forms of the records themselves, which is what I'm what I did you know initially, but here I want to stop and and, and analyze the second um, aspect in a different from a different point of view from the point of view of Equiano. So Coretta interpreted these anomalies as possible evidence. Get rid of that. That, and here we'll begin, Equiano had made up the account of his African origins and adopted material from others. Well, again, okay, what, from the point of view of, of, of someone um, disenfranchised from his own story, from his own narrative, from oral tellings, from life, uh, life experiences um, that allowed, right, um, receipt, of his identity. He never had an identity. That's why, you know, Malcolm used the X, right? Because uh, for some of us, our identities were stolen, you know, um, you know, very, very early on in our lives. And for some of us, you know, those identities were returned. And for some of us, those identities never were returned. And the work of of uh, recovering them has always been one of working, you know, through fragments and shards. And and pieces and, and traumatized memory and and not of uh you know uh the neat, you know, tidy work of sitting at a desk 
writing down, you know, uh, letters, you know, one by one, and words one by one, and sentences one by one from a, a smooth, you know, flow, flowing, linear experience of, of one's life and, and, uh, and, uh, and a certainty of, of the truth of that life and a certainty of, of the rights and the, uh, integrity of that, of, of that life or those lives. Um, so, uh, of, of course, <laughs> of course, of course it was constructed. Of course it was reclaimed. Of course the material was adopted from, uh, stories, you know, and, um, and, and accounts that, that Equiano, um, absorbed, you know, in order and, and, and listened to in order to understand, you know, who he, who he was, who he might have been, who he could have been, who, who it was possible that he was. And, uh, and, and just the fact that, you know, someone wouldn't understand this, I find offensive and I find uh, to be a political position either. It's either uh, disingenuous you know, in terms of, uh, you know, you know, pretending to, uh, not to understand that, that this would have been the work that one would have had to accomplish to tell a story, or it's, 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 it's pitifully naive, you know, in, in terms of understanding uh, the, the psychology of uh, reconstructing one's narrative from, from this kind of positionality. All right, and I'll go on. But Paul Lovejoy... Um, Alexander X. Byrd and Douglas Chambers note how many general and specific details Coretta can document. Uh, sorry, I lost my place. Can document from sources that related to the slave trade in the 1750s as described by Equiano, including the voyages from Africa to Virginia, sail to Pascal in 1754, and others. They conclude he was more likely telling what he understood as fact rather than creating a fictional account. His work is shaped as an autobiography. Lovejoy write, wrote that circumstantial evidence indicates that he was born where he said he was and that, in fact, the interesting narrative is reasonably accurate in its details, although, of course, subject to the same criticisms of selectivity and self-interested distortion that characterized the genre of autobiography. And here I would agree, disagree, sorry, with Lovejoy, uh, that it is not characterized simply by the same um, criticisms of selectivity and self-interested distortion that characterized the genre of autobiography. In fact, that African-American slave narratives and African-American autobiographies are significantly and specifically different from the this universal uh, idea of the genre of autobiography in a number of ways and and they do relate to the acquisition of literacy as struggle the acquisition of self-understanding from a perspective of being displaced from from one's own stories and narratives of the fact that uh, accounts of one's early life are always uh, reconstructions. My 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 dog is crying and wanting to go outside because there are dogs outside crying. So we're gonna have to take a break. I'll come back. Uh, anyway, what I'm getting at with with Lovejoy's response is that um, you know he's he's attempting to defend Equiano by reintroducing uh, this. The sort of universality of autobiography is always subject to selectivity and self-interest. Um, so don't don't pick on Equiano because uh, this autobiography in general, this universal category of autobiography, always does this. But I want to say further. Well, it's not always forced to do the same kinds of work this genre of autobiography and to clarify that uh, 
the, the struggle in, in working with the materials and the shards of, of, uh, of narratives, you know, from which one is, is dispossessed is, is, is significant, significantly different kind of work. And uh, it's not that, 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 that difference by analogy, you know, may exist in other kinds of autobiographies than slave narratives, but, but, but the specifics are, are unique to, to slave narratives. Um, they're, and, and just like my analogy with the child um, experiencing trauma before the acquisition of language, uh, that, that child's narrative will be different um, from the narrative of someone who was an enslaved subject and whose stories uh, and, and biographies were, were um, stolen, right, in, in, in the course of, of the mandates of, of his personal experience, but the analogy will still apply. Um, for some individuals writing uh, autobiography, uh, that level of, of, of piecing together shards, that level of dispossession will not become a part of the autobiography because it began from a place of privilege. And that place of privilege isn't exposed to the violence and, um, and damage that creates the shards to begin with. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's, that's my um, response to, you know, um, to Lovejoy's uh, defense of Equiano, which in, in my opinion is a, is a greater defense, uh, but requires more psychological insight and more historical understanding and, and, and denies, you know, the appeal to this universalized uh, idea of the genre of autobiography. Lovejoy uses the name, that's Leo sneezing, and I don't know why he's been sneezing so much here lately. Um, it's a new environment for him, and he and I seem to be the only one not affected by uh, whatever is in the air that causes the uh, the sneezing. So we're gonna largely ignore him. He's fine. Don't don't worry. <laughs> I'm not ignoring him, and you know he's uh, not in any danger. He's just sneezing. Um, I forget where we are. Um, Lovejoy uses the name Vasa. That's the, the you know his uh, Vasa is uh, his his colonialized name, right? V Lovejoy uses the name of Vasa in his article, since that was the name the man used throughout his life. And then it says in quote his baptism, his naval records, marriage certificate, and will. Uh, he emphasized that Vasa only used his African name in his autobiography. Again, like, um, I, I don't see how that, that is relevant. The documents would have required that, right? It's like, uh, say, say I have a name um, for myself because um, I understand that... Um, like let's let's like let's, bless you. Let's let's say it's it's Malcolm X. Malcolm X understands that the history of his name has nothing nothing to do with who he is, right? It has everything to do with colonialism and the history of slavery. Why why should he be forced, you know, uh, to use a name that uh, that was given to him? As a, as a stolen being, right, from, from someone, uh, and, 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 and then inherited and, and, and proceeded, you know, on, you know, through generations of having, you know, to bear, you know, these names and, and, uh, and histories, you know, with, without, you know, critical review, and, and, uh, and, and then beyond that, in, in, Equiano, not Vasa's case, uh, marriage certificates, wills, and baptism wouldn't have recognized the name Equiano, 
the name they would have recognized was the name that was given to him from the colonizer, okay? Like, I don't know how... I don't know how, you know, uh, that someone would not get that. I don't, I, I really, that's, that's beyond me. I mean, that just seems like, I'm not, I'm not even sure how one can be a scholar and not understand that. But, um, anyway, we'll read it again uh, for clarification. Lovejoy uses the name of Vasa in his article since that was the name the man used through it throughout his life in, quote, his baptism, his his naval records, marriage certificate, and will. He emphasized that Vasa only used his African name in his autobiography. Okay. Um, other historians also argue that the, that the fact that many parts of Ecuyano's account can be proven lends weight to accepting his account of African birth. As historian Adam... Uh, Hope Child, I guess, I don't know how to pronounce his name, has written, in the long and fascinating history of autobiographies that distort or exaggerate the truth, seldom is one crucial portion of a memoir totally fabricated and the remainder scrupul scrupulously accurate. Among autobiographers, both dissemblers and truth-tellers tend to be consistent. He also noted that, quote, since the rediscovery of Vasa's account, and here I don't know why, uh, the word, the name Vasa is being used as opposed to Equiana. Of Vasa's account of the 1960s, scholars have valued it as, as the most extensive account of an 18th century slave's life and the difficult passage from slavery to freedom. Um, and 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 the reason that I'm I'm focusing on on on, on this, sorry. Uh, on this uh, particular history of, of of disputes and claims, right around the facticity or lack of facticity, or or uh, or, or truth telling or lack of tr truth telling in, in this particular story, is not because I'm taking a side one way or another about you know this is an accurate narrative versus this is an inaccurate narrative, or whether Equiano was born in the kingdom of Benin, you know, now Nigeria, or whether he was born in South Carolina. I'm not, I'm not really concerned with those issues at all. What I'm, what I'm taking into account and what I'm concerning myself with is that whatever the truth is, if there is some, you know, um, uh, if there is some material, you know, truth that exists beyond, you know, the, our ability to, to reconstruct it, and, um, and if we had access to that, truth, the truth of, you know, the, the eye and mind of, of, of God or some omniscient uh, being who could re reconstruct uh, this world in, in, in these objective terms. If there was such a thing, um, that truth would have to include the, the fact that this was the only possible way for um, an individual in Equiano's circumstances to have told the story that the very the very materials of his life story the very um fabric of his his narrative the very substance of who he was he had to find and 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 the truth is in the finding not in the found and that that all of these accounts that that look at this question of accuracy fail profoundly to understand that and profoundly fail to understand the the processes of piecing together from uh, the displaced fragments and and shards of, of ruined life what one might be and what one's identity is fail profoundly to have learned like and understood what 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 Malcolm X's X meant fail profoundly, like to have learned the the, the lessons that were available, uh, you know, following the kind of self understanding that Malcolm X provided for those of us who hadn't had that experience of piecing together such shards and misrepresentations and 
and stealings, you know, of oneself from from oneself by uh, by oppressors, by by um, individuals who dared, you know, to claim ownership of our lives, and 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 so the the reason for doing this reading is to. Is, is to shed light on, 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 on the, in a sense, um, what's missing and what, what, what these interpreters seem not to be able to see or to understand and, and to shed light on, on that, that failure to see and that failure to understand and, uh, and to, to use it in some way as, an, again, as an analogy or as a metaphor for the way that in our current situation, there are those who, who do not see, right, the importance of critical race theory, who can't fail to understand its basic lessons and assumptions that have been with us at least and probably like, you know, at least as long, at least intuitively as, as, as you know, the account of, of, of the life of the narrative account of the life of, of Frederick Douglass, you know, who is um, one of the, the first um, and 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 um, inaugurating um, instructors of of this I idea that an identity from this positionality is something that one has to struggle and fight to find and and fight and struggle to tell and fight even and struggle to to um, place into language right and then. And and we see it, and it's a thread that that is there in uh, in the autobiography of of Malcolm X. You know, so even even much later and after um, after emancipation, you know, the 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 stories and the structures and the understandings that are implicit in the slave narratives, you know, continue. To inform the story of of individuals, you know, whose lives are shaped by these oppressive apparatuses and structures of, of racism. So um, that's 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 why it's there, and and that's and that's why I wanted to look at this today, and 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 that's the place that it has in in our ongoing, you know, uh, critique of of this idea of. Of narrative choice and of of of, uh, of what's radical and what 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 is uh, what is not. <laughs>